in my eyelids I call you with Sometimes I just have to share these cute moments I have with my dogs because they're just my favorite. <laughs> and they love cuddling with me. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to my library. My name is Melissa and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. Um, when is the last time I have filmed in front of my gray swivel chairs, in front of my um, like cool barn door? I don't know. I think it's ever since I actually got my shelves installed, I've um, not filmed in this area. <laughs> uh, but I don't know, I just decided to switch it up today and um, play with angles and I don't know. I have Butter here sitting with me <laughs> and um, I thought I would talk to you guys about what I am reading this week. It's Monday morning. I It's my last Monday at my, my job currently. I'm so excited. Um, my last day is Wednesday and then I start on my new job the next Monday. So I'll have like a long weekend to just relax and read. <laughs> it's gonna be so good. Um, so I actually have kind of lofty reading plans this week, but I'm excited, I'm excited. So let me share with you guys what I am planning on reading. So I finished All the Light We Cannot See um, over the weekend. I loved it, it was, it was so good. It was so beautifully written. Oh my goodness, I will never forget the writing. Like that was the main selling point for me um, was the writing, it was just perfect. And then um, I also really loved the plot. Um, the only thing that kept it from a five star for me was the ending. Um, the ending was quite fast paced and very different from the rest of the pacing of the book in my opinion. And um, it just kind of was a little bit jarring for me. I was like, oh, okay, this is really, really like going really fast and like fast forwarding through time. Um, so that was the only thing. So I ended up giving it a four stars, but four stars is still good. It's still, you know, a, a book I highly recommend. Um, three stars is like it met every, all my expectations and it did what it set out to do. And then up from there. So a four star is still really good. I loved it and I'm loving my um, Discord discussion about it. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the book as well. <laughs> With that being said, yesterday I decided um, I was going to do a try a chapter for three different historical fiction books. So I did a, the three that I chose was The Yankee Widow, um, Pull Dark, and then Beyond the Moon, which is right here. And so yeah, I read a chapter of each of these early Sunday morning. And um, actually, surprisingly, even though this is a fan favorite and everyone wants me to pick this up, I actually really loved the first chapter of this book. And so I'm gonna read this one, but it, if all my plans kind of happen how I want them to happen, I will hopefully have enough time also when I finish this book to start Pole Dark. Ross Poldark, I think is the full title. So yeah, that's my plans for the physical reads this, re this week. Um, keeping in line with Historathon. I'm so excited about Historathon. It's been st so fun so far. Um, and yeah, this one will fit the prompt for non-World War II war book. And then this one will fit the prompt for um, a person's name on the title, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're meeting the prompts too, it's great. The only other thing I've got going is Just Like Heaven by Julia Quinn. So I'm almost done. I'm 75% of the way through this book. I'm loving it. It's a friends to lovers, um, brother's best friend trope. And it's also, so it's um, a spinoff series. And uh, it's so fun to also have some of the Bridgerton characters in this book. Um, Lady Danbury was just introduced and I was so excited. Um, they're at a ball hosted by um, the Bridgerton family. And so uh, the two main characters in this book are attending it. And um, it's, a, it's a ball that happened actually in the eighth book, I believe. So it's, it's just been so perfect to like um, keep going and just to see this world keep developing. It's just, it's been awesome. So 
yeah, this is really fun. Um, if I finish with this audiobook, I may pick up The Yellow Bird Sings. Um, guys, I'm struggling reading or listening to audiobooks that are not historical romances for some reason. I think it's just because my I'm so used to them that my brain is struggling trying to shift from like a lighthearted, fun, Rosalind Landor narrated story to like intense World War II or whatever historical fiction. So I gave it a whirl this past week, like an hour's worth. And I was like, oh man, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> um, we'll see though. If not, I might just continue with this series and pick up the second one. What is that one called? Um, I'm actually not sure what the second one is called, but yeah, if I, uh, if I end up, if I end up n not feeling the, the, um, historical fiction book, I'll, I'll just pick up the next book in the series. So yeah, those are my, my reading plans. I'm so excited. Um, one thing I learned about this book that I wanted to share was it gives an author bio. I know Linda Lyle, Lyle Miller. I'm not sure how to say her middle name. She's actually a very popular um, romance author. Um, she writes a lot of um, contemporaries and I think some historical romances. Yeah, historical and contemporary, contemporary his, uh, romances. Anyways, I've never read her before, but um, this is actually a book she's been working on um, because she is a longtime passionate Civil War buff. Hey, can we not? Yeah, so she's studied the Civil War and like read up on it and researched it for 30 years. And so she finally decided to write a story about it. So I think that's so cool. Um, and you can tell she really knows her stuff, even in the first chapter. So it's been fun. Um, okay, with that being said, I also have a book haul for you guys. <laughs> um, I also ended up going book shopping yesterday. Um, it's kind of like a little fun once a month tradition me and my husband do where we go out to brunch and then we go and we either go shopping or we go book shopping or whatever. And it's just, it's just a real nice Sunday activity. So I got four books at the bookstore. It's a used bookstore and they have a huge romance section, which was so exciting. And they also have a huge fiction section. Um, and all the prices were really, really affordable. So it was, it was so nice. I want to go back really bad. The first book I ended up getting was this book here, it's called Blue Willow by Deborah Smith. So this I found in the romance section and I was initially intrigued just because of the length. Um, it's actually pretty thick. Um, let's see how many pages it is. It's almost 530 pages. And then um, I looked it up on Goodreads and it has like a 4.12 rating. It's actually a contemporary, so that's exciting too. Um, but yeah, it just, it sounds so good. It says, a powerful, poignant novel of a man and a woman from different worlds whose passion binds them together even as it tears them apart. So yeah, pick this one up. Super intrigued. I have been on the hunt for this book every time I've gone to the bookstore. Like, for the past year. I'm not even kidding you. I don't know why it's been so hard for me to find. Um, it is Annie's Song by Katherine Anderson. I see Katherine Anderson all the time in the bookstore, but I just never see this book specifically. Um, but I'm so intrigued by this book because it is about a um, girl named Annie Trimble. And it says, Annie Trimble lives in a solitary world that no one enters or understands. As delicate and beautiful as the tender blossoms of the Oregon spring, she is shunned by a town that misinterprets her affliction, but cruelty cannot destroy the love Annie holds in her heart. And so Annie is a mute, um, and I think she's got some, some other stuff going on, but she ends up falling in love with this guy that shows her kindness. And uh, yeah, I'm just so excited about this one. It sounds so sweet and tender. Um, and yeah, I'm just super intrigued by that type of plot. So I picked this one up. The last two are fiction books. Um, I was so excited about all, both of these books when I found them. I was like, yes, gonna buy them. <laughs> the first one is a book I've been hunting for, and this cover specifically I've been hunting for. Um, it's called Sydney Chambers in the Shadow of Death, and it's part of the Grant Chester series by James Runcie. 
So this is a masterpiece um, series that I haven't started because I want to read the books first. But um, it follows a man who's in, who's a priest, obviously. Um, and it's 1953 and he's a detective. So this is like a cozy mystery book, actually. Um, so yeah, it's in this small town, some sort of murder happening happens and he's in charge of kind of um, uncovering the crime. But also there's some sort of slow burn romance between him and his assistant, whose name is Jordy, I believe. Yeah, and uh, I'm so down. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. Um, yeah, I just am so intrigued by that plot. You guys know I love anything like clergy romance. I'm just so excited about it. So, and he is very, very handsome. So I wanted this cover because I was like, I like this cover. <laughs> The last book I'm hauling today is A Different Blue by Amy Harmon. Yes, Amy Harmon, one of my favorites. Oh my gosh. Um, I actually posted this on Instagram and she posted it on her stories. I was so excited. <laughs> I think there's like some sort of taboo dark romance happening with this and I am so down. I'm so excited about it. So another book to add to my Amy Harmon TBR. I have, let's see, I have Making Faces and From Sand and Ash on my TBR. And I'm so excited also to read From Sand and Ash um, in March. That's the plan for the Discord group is to read that book. So um, that book follows a World War II um, setting and it follows a young Catholic priest who, fall, who uh, is friends with a Jewish girl. They're like childhood friends and then they end up having a romance and so there's all sorts of forbidden um things and also like just things happening around them <laughs> um to prevent this from happening so yeah i'm just like very intrigued by that book <laughs> i'm so excited to read it with you guys if you are down to read it with me so um okay that was the longest clip ever um but I, I was just excited to share with you guys all of these books I ended up getting. Um, yeah, here they are again. Butter's wanting my attention. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be working the rest of the day and then hopefully reading tonight and just loving life. <laughs>
you guys are looking for a great um, burn for you scene, <laughs> you will find it in this book. Um, but yeah, I actually really enjoyed how this wrapped up. Um, it wrapped up how I like, um, it loops in the Smythe Smith musical really well, um, makes it really like fun and um, part of their love story essentially. And so I thought it was really cute. Um, I mean, it was kind of a like slower plot, like I said, uh, and I there was only one sex scene in this and it was really kind of boring. And so I was like, hmm, this is interesting. This is a very, very clean romance if you're looking for one. And like, I don't want a ton of like fire in my books, but um, this was more, this was a lot more bland. <laughs> like, you know, like, uh, I just need a little bit of more spice than what this had. So I ended up giving a three and a half stars, but uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it and I'm excited to continue in the series, so. Yeah, that was the book I finished today. Um, the other book I'm reading still is, I mean, I know I've talked about this literally like in the past clip, but The Yankee Widow, I'm a hundred and something pages in now. And literally uh, the hero just barely got introduced. This isn't a romance novel, so that doesn't surprise me. This is, this is historical fiction, I think is how it's classified. Um, but I know it has to do with a widow, obviously, who falls in love with a soldier. Um, and it's a Union widow and a Confederate soldier. So it finally introduced the soldier. And actually every single, um, every single chapter in here is kind of the perspective of that, res of that character. So it switches a lot of perspective, which is kind of cool. It's not first person, but it's still just like, it's from their eyes kind of deal. So um, yeah, finally got to his chapter. Uh, I'm enjoying this. I'm not like loving it yet. Um, I'm still waiting for like sparks to fly or something to happen for me to like really love it. Um, I honestly kept thinking maybe I would like put it aside to read another book that I'm excited about, but uh, it's not enough for me to want to quit the book. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm gonna keep going. Um, but yeah, it's it was kind of a tough day. I, I sent my farewell email out too. Um, and it's just weird with COVID, like uh, all these people that you saw in the office every day and that you said hi to and connected with and asked how they were doing, how's their family, etc. And ever since COVID and working from home, at least where I work, you were really only pinged or Skyped when you were needed. <laughs> and so all of that casual talk, you know, that kept you connected to people has gone away. And so, yeah, when I sent that email to most of my, like I, I only sent it to like my close work colleagues to just say goodbye and say thank you and um, don't be a stranger. And um, anyways, to have them all respond and be like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know you were leaving and I'm so sorry we didn't connect. And it's kind of like, yeah, like it's just, it's just kind of how it is these days. Like it's not on them or, you know what I mean? It's not like I'm mad at them, but it's more just like, that's just kind of how it is. <laughs> so anyways, it was very surreal sending that email out. I, I was sad about it, but I'm also very, very excited about this new job that I'm starting on Monday. Um, it should be awesome. And um, I know it's gonna be a very hard transition since I'm still working from home. So it's just gonna be me trying to learn all the new software and like learn who people are and like the normal office protocol from home. <laughs> so that's gonna be really tough, but I'm, I've am i mentally prepared myself for that. So I, I know what I'm getting into, so I should be fine. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely gonna soak up this last kind of free week I have to read <laughs> um, before like things really get serious with my job, so. Yeah, fingers crossed for that. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is me with wet hair and I'm in sweats and I am gonna be loving life today because 
it was my official like last day at my job today and so i just had to send off a few quick emails and uh know how to return my laptop and that's it i'm done <laughs> i'm so happy i'm so excited for today and tomorrow um wednesday and thursday where i don't have to work and i can just be at home reading literally that's my plan <laughs> Um, so cheers to that. I have my major melon Mountain Dew here. I've been saving it for this moment. So yes. Cheers. Anyways, um, so updates on my reading. So you guys, I ended up <clears throat> reading 150 pages, which is almost halfway um, in this book. Last night, I was like, I'm going to give it a fair shot. I'm going to try to really see if I like this book. And I was honestly just so bored. I don't know why, but there was just no plot. And I was like, if it's going to be a romance novel, like, I need, like, if it's a romance book, I need more romance. If it's a historical fiction, I need more, I need more plot. It was just kind of blah. And I knew I wasn't going to give it higher than a four maybe a four but probably more like a three and I was like you know what I it's I have all this time this week to read before I start my new job and I just want to be loving what I'm reading so you guys I'm dnfing this one um but you know what I no regrets honestly ever since I decided I was gonna dnf it I set it down and it's been great <laughs> um so yeah and then the uh, the book I decided to pick up was Poldark, Ross Poldark by Winston Graham. You guys all on Instagram messaged me, commented on my post where I talked about the three books I was trying to decide to read and said that I should pick this book. So you were right, I was wrong. <laughs> um, and yeah, I picked this up again last night, um, read a little bit more and I'm really, really enjoying it so far. So I have super high hopes for this. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to keep reading this. I'm just gonna be reading this all day. So that's my plan. Um, the other thing I wanted to share with you guys is a fun Lush haul. <laughs> um, yeah, one thing you guys might not know about me is I love baths. I am a huge take a bath girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to have an amazing bath setup when I was in Seattle. Oh. It was this standalone huge white porcelain tub mm -hmm. with this electric oh. fireplace above. And I would turn that on, light a few candles, turn on my bath water and put a bath bomb in there. And it was the ultimate reading and enjoying and relaxing experience ever. I miss that tub so much. I don't have a standalone tub in this house. Um, first world problems, but yeah, I just have a shower tub, but I'm still gonna enjoy, <laughs> still gonna enjoy my baths. So um, the reason why I went to Lush was I was invited by my sister-in-law. She's hosting this little get together um, where we're sharing our favorite things. And like each of us is gonna be giving our favorite things to someone else. And so um, she gave us a price range for what we should try to look for. And um, I immediately thought of Lush because I was like, yes, that's something that everyone can enjoy is a nice bath. Um, at least I hope so. So yeah, so I ended up getting this little gift box um, for this party. Uh, it's called Happy Days is the, is the box. And it comes with four awesome bath stuff. It comes with um, two bath bombs and two bubble bars. I like their bath bombs better than their bubble bars, but that's just me. Um, my favorite one is uh, the Twilight bath bomb. I love Intergalactic as well. And uh, yeah, I love any of the like sweet or lavender scent ones. Those are my favorite. So yeah, I saw this one had Intergalactic and so I wanted to pick this one up. It's really cute though, right? Like this is an adorable box. I'm excited for whoever gets this. I kind of want it myself, honestly. I was like, man. <laughs> uh, anyways, so yeah, obviously while I was there, I decided to also treat myself. And so I got two bath bombs here. Um, 
So yeah, I'll show you the two. These are the two classics that I really love. I got, butter is super interested. <laughs> Smells good, huh? Um, so this one is my favorite bath bomb ever. So this is the Twilight bath bomb. Oh, it is my favorite scent. Oh, I just love it so much. It's kind of sweet, lavender, I think. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah. So there's that one. And then I'm trying to avoid the dogs like eating this. So that's my problem right now. Um, the other bath bomb is just a classic butterball bath bomb. Um, yeah, my, my husband actually loves these too. He loves putting these in baths. Uh, he doesn't really like the, you know, the flowery, glittery, crazy ones. He just likes a real simple, like just for your, to cleanse your skin and make it feel like butter. So yeah, he loves this one. So yeah, guys, that was my cute little lush haul I thought I'd show you. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm just going to be reading and enjoying Poldark, hopefully. I keep calling it Poldark, but it's Ross Poldark, but whatever. Um, and that's my plan. This is my idea of a perfect morning. Just reading in the sunshine with my two doggos at my side. Cuddly, so cute. <laughs> oh, yes. So I am in the middle of reading this still. Um, sorry if you can hear my jazz in the background. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I am really loving this book. It's so um, engaging right now, which is like what was lacking with the with the Yankee Widow. Um, I'm just really interested in where this plot is going. It seems very like set up so far. Like I know this is a huge series and so I'm sure this is just a very long setup type of book probably. Um, but yeah, so the story is that um, this man, Ross Poldark, comes back from the um, Revolutionary War where he fought for the British. He comes back to his family estate in Cornwall and um, he comes back because his father has passed away and um, his farm that he is now in charge of is in disarray. He came back to also see his long, bet long time betrothed um, named Elizabeth and um anyways this is all in the plot like in the back so i'm not spoiling anything by saying that um she ends up being engaged to his cousin and he had no idea and so so far it's just about him um trying to get his bearings again in uh this town and um rebuilding his his estate and everything and uh anyways his cousin who his name is verity she is the sister to elizabeth um and she's very much interested i can tell in ross and she kind of low-key asks him to go to this ball with her and for him to ask her to it and so they're at the ball now and that's why i decided to turn on the camera because we all love a ball scene, am I right? <laughs> the best. Um, and I had to read this description because I'm also really appreciating Winston Graham's writing. So it says, the band scraped away, the figures pirouetted, moving and bowing and stepping, turning on heels, holding hands, pointing toes. The shadows intermingled and changed, forming and reforming intricate designs of light and shade like some gracious depiction of the warp and woof of life, sun and shadow, birth and death, a slow interweaving of the eternal pattern. Oh, isn't that so good? I love it. Um, yeah, beautiful writing. I'm curious, like, yeah, I'm just curious where this is going as far as the plot, but I'm sure it will slowly be um, divulged, <laughs> so that's fine. But yeah, just thought I'd turn on the camera and read that beautiful description of a ball. <laughs>
So um, it has been a busy day today, to say the least. Oh my gosh. I have been running errands and doing all of the things today, cleaning the house, walking the dogs, um, going to the library, <laughs> um, just all of the fun things. Uh, so I'm finally sitting down to just wrap up the vlog. I have my sister, my twin sister Meg, who you guys have met if you watched my um, bookish quiz with my twin um, video that I did recently. Um, she's coming to town with her boyfriend tomorrow, so um, I'm trying to frantically <laughs> get ready for that. Uh oh, yeah, that's what my day has been packed with. But um, I thought I would wrap up the vlog here and show you guys one thing I got at Target that I wanted to try on camera. If the dogs can sit, I just took them on a walk, so they should be fine. Um, but look what I got. <laughs> Lady Gaga Oreos. Yes, I'm so excited. I um, just got to keep these away from the dogs. But uh, yeah, I wanted to try these on camera. Um, I'm just so intrigued. I don't think they're a different flavor than normal Oreos, but they are very pretty. I'm trying to open it. There we go. Hey, 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 hey. So that's what they look like. They're like pink and green stripes. Way cool. Okay, let's try one. <laughs> what does it say on it? Chromatica, I think is what it says on the back. That's funny. Okay, here we go. No, these are vanilla. Yeah, these are vanilla Oreos. I like had to make sure I was right. I'm like 99% sure I'm right about that. They're good though. Yeah. I like it. Very good Oreo. Guys, all the junk food today. It's bad. So, um, what I ended up reading last night was more of Ross Paul Dark by Winston Graham. So good. I am so enjoying this. Oh, I'm so glad I picked this up. Um, I'm 108 pages in. And um, it's just more of the same stuff that I talked about already about him just um, meeting other characters and getting the lay of the land. And he just took um, a girl in from kind of off the street. She, she was kicked out by her dad um, and she got like a major beating on her back and she, she showed him that. And um, so Ross, out of the goodness of his heart, like felt really bad for her, took her in and um gave her a place to stay for the night and offered her a job as his kitchen maid um i think she's a main character in the book please don't spoil me though if there's like something going on but um her name is demelza i think and i know that because i own the second book that is titled demelza so um yeah she must grow up and become a woman and have her story told as well so I'm excited for that one already. I can tell she's going to be a great character. Um, but yeah, my plan for the, the rest of the day now that, I, that I've done my chores is I need to actually edit my vlog that should go up tomorrow. I have put it off and I kind of hate myself for it, but that's okay. But I'm going to edit my vlog and then um, do laundry and then read. <laughs> so I'm going to re reward myself after I've done literally all my chores today with some reading. And that'll be nice before my sister and her boyfriend get to town. So yeah, that is the plan. Um, I also picked up on audio. It's called Making Up by Lucy Parker. So this is number three in the London Celebrities series. I read Act Like It last year and it became one of the top 10 books of the year for me, which is number one. And then number two is called Pretty Face. I gave that one four stars. I really enjoyed it. And so, yeah, when it came through in my Libby app, uh, I just knew I was going to pick it up right away. It doesn't really fit anything like for Historathon or, you know, anything like that. But it is just such a fun read. And it actually takes a while for it to come through um, uh, via my library. There's always like a long wait list for them for some reason. So I've been waiting for this book for like four weeks. So, yeah, it was not about to... Uh, <laughs> 
relinquish on that opportunity. <laughs> so, um, anyways, I think that's basically everything I needed to say. Um, but I, I really hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Uh, please let me know if you liked it. And um, <clears throat> if you would like, please like and comment. I reply to every single comment. And please subscribe if you want to see more from me. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye!